stuff my channel of wondrous audio things that I do a lot of different things in it so please subscribe if you haven't yet and if you're new here and you like what you see okay so hey today what I want to talk to you about in this tutorial is about mastering and mastering a thing in the audio industry generally is a bit of a taboo that um Many people don't really know what it is. So basically what mastering is, is that it's basically like when you put, do your hair and you put a hairspray on the top of it, the hairspray is mastering. It just basically holds everything together, makes everything bigger and shinier and just looks, sounds better. That's what mastering is. And mastering is an art form, the same way that mixing is. So there is different techniques, different gear, different ways to do it. But, but what I'm basically with this tutorial, what I want to say is that if you are singer songwriter, you are a music producer and you just want to get your stuff out there, you can do your own masters to a certain extent and you can make them sound amazing but more professional you can make them sound better and bigger and wider just by using couple tricks and tips so in this video i will show you the basics and the basics of idea what mastering is what you should do and let me know if this works for you might not be for some people but but let me know down in the comment if these tips and tricks help you to master your own stuff. So first things fir first thing so first things first is that a saying in English? I'm not sure anymore. So you can use these techniques on whatever door you're using. Are you using Pro Tools, Ableton like I am? Or are you using Logic, any uh, FL Studio, whatever you're using, you can still use the same thing. What we need to think about first is that we have a track that we want to master. You can master it so that you bounce the whole thing, uh, the whole mix that you have everything in it. It's well mixed and there's a lot of headroom. And headroom means that there it's not peaking and it's not too quiet. Yeah, so that there's a really good amount of uh, dynamics left in there. So don't compress it on a master channel or anything yet. Bounce it off and then import it again into your DAW. Then what you need to do, so make sure that you have a track and then you have a master track. So you have a master output and then you can have a master track. So uh, some DAWs do it automatically like Logic, but Ableton example has a master output and master track and the same, it's like one thing. Um, same thing is like example Pro Tools, but in Pro Tools example, or even in Ableton, you can create another track that is where you put all the mastering plugins and then master output is just the final destination where you can monitor what's going out. So in summary, what I will show you next is the key plugins to use, which are limiter, compressor and EQ and volume controlling uh, plugin. So those four, those four are the key things to kind of just start up making your masters better. Then after that, I will show you also that how I use HOFA Hoffer mastering program. Okay, so let's go into Ableton and I will show you a basic, basic master of a track. Okay, babe, so let's have a look at this mastering thing then. So we have a track here in front of us that doesn't have too much dynamic changes because it's created with the analog synthesizer and this is what we want to master right now. So the first thing we take is a limiter and we put that in the master channel and that's the first in line. Then a compressor and an EQ and you can decide which way around you want to put them. Okay, so next we're going to go to the EQ in the master channel. It's very important that the track is equalized in the master channel because we want to balance the differences between low end, mid and high. So example, we might need a little bit of more depth into the mix. So we're going to rise in 200 to 300 hertz. Then we're gonna go and take a little bit of muddiness area away from six to seven to 900. And then we're gonna add a little bit presence into 2K as like this. 
As an extra tip, what I want to show you is that you're going to go to 16.5 kilohertz and you're going to rise a little bit of that like that. And this is actually going to help you a lot with making a little bit more air and space into the mix. Okay, so next we're going to go to the compression. So compression is pretty complicated to explain in a couple of minutes, but if you would like to know more about it, please let me know and I'm going to make a own tutorial about it. So with compression, what we want to achieve is some presence into the track. So we're going to be using compressor because it, it reduces dynamic range between highest and the lowest points of the signal. So it will help us control the dynamic changes between example verses or C parts comparing to the courses what you need to have a look at especially the relationship between attack and release when mastering so that we can avoid any kind of pulsing sounds that would come out of the compressor so next one i will have a look at the hoffer for u meter fader and ms pan so with this what i can go to is uh, modes and integral and as well as go to scale and pick up the LUFS 9, which allows me to go to the end of the meter and check what is the minus LUFS, LUFUS or whatever, how you pronounce it. And that allows me to kind of see realistically what is the loudness of the track when it's been mastered. So example, if it's an online track, I would like it to be minus 9 to minus 12 LUFS or LUFUS. And if it's for CD, it would be from minus 12 to minus 14. After this, we're going to go to File and Export. And from here, to be able to master it properly, we're going to go to create a WAV file, 24 bits, and then we're going to dither it with example triangle shape. Okay, so now you have created a master and you have bounced that off and you're happy with it. You're happy how it sounds, it's loud enough, it's big, it's wider and it's a good balance in the frequency range. So now what you do is that you import that into Hofa Mastering Program. And in there, what you can do now is, example, if it's an EP or if it's an album, or input the metadata, which includes the royalty code. In the UK, the code is called ISRC code. You get it from PPL, you put it into the track, you sunk it into the uh, metadata, and then basically every time your song is played somewhere, PRS, which is a UK, the royalty company giving you the money, they know then where to, where is it played, how long is played, all this data is gathered and you get money. Let's have a look quickly, basic features in Hofa and what you can do in there. Okay, so let's have a look at this Hofa. So here I have added, so dragged and dropped, cut two tracks into this session. Here on the top, you can see all the data and arrangement of the track. So I have the first track, second track, and I can also set where it's album or EP starts and ends. On the bottom here, I can also put markers where the songs go and where do they end. Between the tracks, you can see that there is a gap and I can set where the song starts and how many seconds there will be time between the first track and the second track and how many seconds there will be time between the tracks as well as in the ending and in the beginning. In the top you can see the meditator and in here you can put insert example ISRC codes as well as the composer, an album, a name, um, all these important names that will also appear example when you play the song in a car that's the data that will appear in the car radio screen so don't put some really weird stuff in there other important things to look at is that on here we can also follow the loops so we can still have a look how many loops the volume is and that allows to control the ultimate volume of the masters otherwise you can also control the volume from these sliders here and that is really important in mastering that when we have an EP on album we will need to make sure that all the songs kind of flow really nicely one to another volume wise. So next we have options to example also create a vinyl mix so you can create A side and B side with this program. And here you can burn a CD, a write DDP file, which is a data file that you will send example for CD manufacturers, and you can export the songs as a WAV of MP3 files. 
So that was it. Hofer program. Back to Studio Lena. <laughs> to myself. So thank you for watching this video and please let me know if down in the comments if there is further uh, tutorials like this that you would like to learn. Um, any in music industry stuff, any mastering things, any kind of mixing things that you're kind of confused about, please let me know down in the comments and I will make you a video. And hey, please follow my social medias as well because there is more and more and more stuff coming out in there as well. That information about courses and hopefully soon something else to do with so it should come in the early next year so follow my social medias so that you are informed about everything but that now hey see you next week see you next sunday and i will see you later have a really good sunday and i will see you next week okay bye